Good morning, everybody. I am still doing my last little bit of set up here. I'll just get my sample database all set up and ready to go. But it took a little bit longer than I anticipated. So give me just one second to finish this jam up. And then we will get going. All right, there's my connection there. Let's close that. I had a big chunk of sample data I'm trying to copy and paste into here. And if it works, awesome. Almost there. Almost there. Need to add commas in this query. Cool, because we need to have a collection of data to play with first. All right. All right. So today's workshop, first workshop of the day, is NoSQL querying. I'm going to show kind of a sample of how to get set up in NoSQL, how to connect a good couple ways to store some scripts, and how to get going and started. So what I have here is I have a NoSQL folder with some text documents in it, and I have Visual Studio Code. I'm going to use both of those to do all of my work today. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. Right, I have my scripts.txt file open. I have two files in here, but I want just my scripts.txt. I am going to be saving. I should share my screen. All right, let's start that over real quick. I forgot to share my screen. I knew there was something. Monday morning, can't go that quick. It's not even Monday, it's Wednesday. Yeah, but that kind of day. So, Visual Studio and NoSQL folder. So I open up Visual Studio Code by double clicking on it and it should pop open. I have my folder open inside of here, NoSQL. I have a scripts.txt and I have my terminal in the bottom. We're gonna be doing a majority of our work through the terminal. We're gonna be accessing the Mongo shell. So the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out how to connect to my MLAB database. In order to do that, I need to log into MLAB.com. I just so happen to already be logged into my mlab.com database over here. And I have a database called Ammon that I need to log into. Right. If I click on that database, I get this awesome handy string at the top here. Let me increase my page size to connect using the Mongo shell. And that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to copy this guy. Right. Copy this. So that's what I want to start with. I'm going to paste this up here in my text editor. So what I need to do is I need to replace DB user and DB password with my user and password. The user I've created for this example is user password one. Save that text file. This is my connection to Mongo. So if I take that and paste it down inside of my shell below, it will connect. We'll say something like this. If I get a line at the bottom, it says rs dash DS227373, which is the name of my server, primary, then I'm good. If I don't get that, then it didn't work. Let's look at what some of those things that didn't work. My password is wrong. Say login failed. If my server is wrong, we'll give me timeout error messages. We'll try to connect for a second and we'll say, hey, connect failed. 
if I just type in Mongo. It just opens up the Mongo shell. Right? And that's not necessarily what I want. I don't want to try to connect to a local database. That's what it's going to try to do. The Mongo command just by itself will try to connect to a local database. And that's not what I want. What I want is this guy. Huh? As long as I type in my right password. What? I want that guy. Right? I want it to say this line at the bottom. If I don't have that line, then my commands will not work. So cool. So I'm connected. What's one of the first things I can do? I can look and see what I got. I can write a command that show collection. Show collections. This will show me the collections that's inside of this database. I have bios, pets, and indexes. Cool. So I'm going to do some connect to Mongo. Connect to MLab database with the Mongo command. Show a list of collections. Show collections. Pretty straightforward. Collection. So I have a bios collection here. I've pre-populated with some data. I got that data from some of the MongoDB sample data. I'm going to put that address at the top of my section here. It is the bios example collection. And it looks like a whole chunk of data. Inserting this is a little bit tricky. There's a couple of things to change and do. But this is the data I'm going to be using for my examples. Cool. So I'll also, um, yeah, and maybe I'll show how to insert that data a little bit later. But I want to, I want to find this data first. I just want to show everything that's in this collection. So how can I do that? I can say db dot bios dot find. Open close parentheses semicolon. That just spit out everything that was in that collection, right? And that's kind of ugly. Can I do a better output? Is there a way to make it prettier? Maybe I can. Hmm. Pretty. Oh, hey, it is a lot prettier. Interesting. So here is my data. Right? Here's all the JSON data I have about my people. I have Scott Backus. I have John McCarthy. These are Grace Hopper. These are prominent computer science people. Right? I have all sorts of things and metals and people, James Gosling. Right? Cool stuff. I have, I have just a chunk of data that I can try to query against, right? And all sorts of properties and, and all sorts of cool stuff. So what I want to try to do is I want to try to find, I'm trying to try to find Grace Hopper. Um, if you're not familiar with Grace Hopper, um, Google her. Amazing person. I want to find just Grace Hopper. Her title is a rear admiral. She's a Navy rear admiral, right? Or she was a Navy rear admiral. So I want to find somebody with the title of rear admiral, right? db.bios.find, right? So collections, get all data out of a collection. Cool. I'm going to say db dot bios dot find open close parentheses open close curly brackets inside of here right actually I type this out above here find grace hopper by title which is rear admiral right so to do that because I can type a little bit easier up here than I can type down here right we'll actually see if this works 
So I want to find Grasshopper by title. DB dot bios dot find. Right. Find takes an object to compare against. It's going to take this object and it's going to compare it against every single field in my database. So I want to find where title is equal to rear admiral semicolon. So if I paste this in here, hey, that found me Grace Hopper. And just one result back. And it's got the one result. Right? I can find any by the eye title then. This follows the JSON structural pattern. I have a property and I have a value. I can also do a more complex query. And I could say, find me the title and set that to be an object. And then it's going to do a comparison operator. I can say, find me the title where it's equal to Rear Admiral. Right? If I take this and run this, I should get the same exact result. I missed a curly bracket. Same exact result. Right. So the find by title and the find by title with an equality operator are synonymous with each other. Right? Title rear admiral, title equal to rear, rear admiral. But I can do interesting things here. What if I wanted to do not equal to, which is not equal to, an EQ? Right? I can say give me everybody except for where the title is Rear Admiral. Cool. So I can say, give me everybody where the title is not Rear Admiral. Not equal to. Mm, I thought it was NEQ. Is it not NEQ? NE, there's no Q. NE. Not equal, not equal to rear admiral. Right. I mean, a whole chunk of data. I get everybody else except for Grace Hopper. So find me where it's equal to that, or find me where it's not equal to that. Right? That's pretty cool. Right? So also have, there's a lot of operators I can do in here. All of my people have an ID. Maybe I wanted to find the ID greater than, everybody's ID that's greater than five. Do db.bios find, I'm gonna put an object in here, or a JSON object. I'm gonna say, I want the ID field. And I do another object and I say where it's greater than five. If I copy this and run it, it gives me six, eight, nine, and 10. I don't know what happened to seven. I don't think there's a seven. There is not a seven. All right, so I get six, eight, nine, and 10, which is correct in my example data. All right, I don't have any IDs. Greater than five. I have greater than equal to GTE. If I run greater than equal to down here, it should give me five as well, which I get. Right. I have greater than and I have greater than and equal to. Right. I have less than and less than or equal to. Right. I have all those comparison operators. So I can do a raw property value comparison or I can do a property conditional comparison. Kind of the two basic ways to start comparing data. And using this structural pattern, I can start making these a lot more complicated. Right? Each of my, no, I'm going to use this page over here as my example to show this. This is a lot prettier than my output. Right? Each of my people have awards with a year. I want to see if I can find anybody who has an award past 1980. Right. 
Yeah, I think I want to do awards past 1980. Let's see if I can figure that out. So awards, awards is an array. So I can do array operators, dot n and or. Okay, let's see if we can figure that out. So db dot bios dot find semicolon at the end. I want awards dot year to be in the array. Now I want to want that to be greater than I said greater than nineteen eighty. Think that is a query that I want. Hey -oh. so I'm going to clear out the terminal real quick and run this. See what I get. Missing property after ID. Oh, I missed the curly bracket. Missed it. Set the curly brackets. That's why I like using the editor at the top. Much easier to find those. Missing property ID still. Hmm. I don't think I can do awards.year like that. I thought I could off the top of my head. Well, let's just see if we can find. Um, hmm. Let's see if we can find some good queries to find in here. Apples, oranges, quantity field. So let's do. See if we can find this out. Mongo, find uh, array in. Query an array. Find tag red. That's what I did. <laughs> Let's try an in 1980. Still doesn't like that. Hmm. It should be awards.year, but maybe it doesn't like that. Let's see if we can find a different example to query off of. We'll step a little bit, a little bit lower into that. All right, um, name. Let's see if we can find first name. Uh, we were talking about Grace Hopper earlier. Let's see if I can just find the first name of Grace. So I should be able to say db.bios.find, give it a JSON object to compare against. I'm going to say that name dot, name dot, uh, name dot first equal to grace. That should give me first name. It really doesn't like that. I thought you could do object operators like that. Hmm. I think, oh, I need to put it in quotes. That's what it is. There we go. That was the missing magic. Awesome. So I'm finding where my objects name.first property is equal to grace. This is a raw comparison. I get only that one that's in there. I want to do a little bit more robust comparison. I could do dollar sign EQ. Race. And run that again. Clear that out. Run my command. And let me actually run the command with all the curly brackets. Cool. Race hopper. See if I can find her by a different way. Let's see if we can actually do awards this time. I want the award year db.bios.find. I'm going to do in quotes award.year. I'm going to do dollar sign greater than 1980. Semicolon at the end. Nothing. In needs an array. 
in 1980. Still not. What is the year that somebody had an award? 1976. I know that's one. 1976. Seventy-six. Still nothing. I don't think it likes award that year. Hmm. I think crawling into that kind of array is going to be too much for us at the moment. But more simpler comparisons. Okay. Let's start and see, kind of in a more straightforward linear journey what we've done so far. Right. I know I can find everything by just a raw dot find query. I don't have to give it anything. I can optionally give it an empty object if I want to. It gives me everything out of my database, all of my data. A find query is a great way to just see what's there. Right. And then I want to find somebody by a title. I can say db.bios.find an object. And I can say what property you want. Give me where the title is equal to for your demo. It gives me one result. Here's my query line. I'm going to highlight that so we can see what the difference is here. I have my query, and then I get one result. Grace Hopper is a rear admiral. I can run that query also as a comparison, or is it a quality comparison instead of just a raw query? Okay, so give me the title where, and I introduce a new object. I'm doing an equality comparison where it's equal to rear admiral. I'm gonna highlight my query again so we can see the difference between the two. And they're exactly the same. I get the same exact data back. It also means if I can check to see if something is equal to, I can check to see if something is not equal to with the NE operator. And that gives me a whole lot more data. That gives me everybody else. Again, here is my query way up here. If I can find it, oh, it's buried in here. <laughs> not equal to rear admiral. And I get everybody but Grace Hopper. All right. I can use the command CLS to clear out my screen. Actually, it just bumps it to the bottom. Right. And in kind of a nutshell, that's connecting to Mongo through the shell and doing some basic queries. Right. There are many, many query operators. Our lessons go through like equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, whether I'm in an array, just the quantity in, whether I'm not in an array, I have ands and ors and nors, exists and types, all sorts of the querying gets, gets pretty, pretty robust in Mongo, right? But typically the step one is to look at all of the data, look at the data and see what you want to find and then start slicing it to more individual pieces. And then drill down your query until you have exactly the record or the records that you want. Okay. And again, here's the address where I got that data. I kind of manually insert it in my database to play with. That way I can kind of see, some, see a, a complex data set and then start writing queries against it and start playing around. Cool. I was going to have a brief, brief, quick primer on getting started with the Mongo shell and a collection and querying data. Right. Quick, quick, getting started. And then a couple errors that could happen when you're connecting to your Mongo shell database right. and where to get that query string from. Cool. All right, I'm gonna keep this one nice, short, and sweet. It's the holiday season, so small videos are easier to digest, because that way you can have more of them. Right? Smaller, better things are better than longer, good things. Ah, that was weird. So yeah, 
So it's short video, straight to the point, a couple of queries to play with. And then, like I said, one of the things I recommend is keeping a list of scripts that you're, you're working with, with your Mongo shell in a file. That way they're a lot easier to edit or to type in again if you need them. And Visual Studio Code does that great for us. I have my scripts and then I have an output at the bottom. I want to cancel my output, I just press Control C. It'll say bye. And go back to my normal terminal shell. Groovy. Any questions, concerns, comments, issues, holiday greetings before we call this video done? Hi, I have a question about, um, I'm, unfortunately, with the first uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Um, how, how did you get into the Mongo shell? How did I get into the Mongo shell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I started off, I already have it installed. Right. I have Mongo installed on my system. I think I can check the version. Mongo version, yeah. If I do Mongo dash version, it'll tell me what version it is. That tells me I have the command, I have the shell installed. Right. If I don't have the shell installed, I can go to their site and install it. And that is going to be at mongodb.com. And we can go to, uh, is there a download section? It's got to be down. There we go. Big green button. Get MongoDB. Want Mongo server? And I'm just going to pick the latest version, MSI installer. Their installer will install everything for you. Everything that you the next step was to go into MLab. I log into my MLab site. And I have a collection here already made, a database made. And if I click on that database, this gives me the command to connect to it. Right, this is my command. I don't want the percent sign. I want everything after it. You actually cannot select that percent sign. It's an image. So I copy this line of text and I put that there. Put it in my editor real quick just to kind of have it there. The two things I need to replace is the username and password that I made for my collection. Right? And it's not the username and password login MLab, it's the specific one for my collection. If I need to make a new one, I can always go into users and make a new user. But I know my user's name is user. And I made the password simple with password one. Copy that line out and then throw it in my shell at the bottom, just as a command line, just the whole, whole command, Mongo, and then the address of my connection. It's going to connect. And it's going to give me a line at the bottom that says RS dash DS something, something, something. That's actually going to match up with the name of the server I'm connecting to. That should match up. And that means that I'm connected to that remote database. And I can press control C to exit. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much the important part is just Remember, remember to remove the brackets around like the placeholder username and password. Okay. That's why I like using the little text editor and terminal at the same time. It's much easier to modify this stuff than it is in the when you're typing in commands in the terminals. Right. And that way you can save it and copy and paste it and use it over and over again. That way you just have a single line that once you know it works, you can copy and paste and keep on connecting to your database. Which is pretty cool. Awesome. So yeah, that should that should do it. If there's any errors, if there's like the possible errors you could get, maybe the password or the username is wrong, it'll say login failed. If like the address somewhere is wrong, it'll say something like connect failed. If I just type in the Mongo command by itself. It's going to try to connect to a local database. 
It's going to try to connect locally to my system instead of remotely to a remote database. And it's just going to give me this caret down here where it looks like it kind of may be worth, but there's nothing there. All right. So the output I want is the RS and then something and then primary. That means everything is all good. Cool. Cool. Hopefully that should help you get connected. Yes, thank you very much. That was very helpful. Cool. All right. Then on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close down this workshop. I'll get it uploaded to our Vimeo workshop channel. So you can feel free to rewind or watch through any parts or pause it and see what's going on. And hopefully it'll help out. All right. So I hope everybody has a happy holiday weekend and I'll see people on my next workshop.